behold, the beautiful city of Lisbon, Portugal. They call this place the San Francisco of Europe and for good reason. That right there is the biggest suspension bridge on the continent and it's red, just like the Golden Gate. Trams and streetcars fill the streets here. There are steep hills everywhere too. Both cities have amazing, unique architecture. Both have been struck by devastating earthquakes and the list of similarities goes on and on. But there is one major difference between Lisbon, Portugal and the city by the bay in California. This place can actually be inexpensive, which we know is important. This is a travel show for people like me, people who are spur of the moment who want to travel but also want to save some money. So tag along fellow tightwads as we make new friends. <laughs> take you to new heights. I don't do well with heights when you're walking those spiral staircases up. And embrace new experiences. I really feel like most young people are more about experiences, not possessions. They want to really experience something, feel something, go out and explore this world. And that's what we like to do. It's time to let your guard down and explore one of Europe's oldest cities on this week's episode of Window Seat. They say to look up when you visit a new city, take in the buildings and the beauty. But when we hit downtown Lisbon, we couldn't help but look down. You look around, everything is just this mosaic tile. There is no pavement whatsoever. And it must have taken just years upon years to do. Uh, but I have not seen one paved road here so far. A black and white stone carpet lines the sidewalks and public spaces all over town. They call it Portuguese pavement, and it's just one of the things that makes this place unique. When you finally do look up, you notice all the other things that make Lisbon unforgettable. A city filled with fountains and flowers, cable cars and kiosks, where, just like the song, you can actually find chestnuts roasting on an open fire. I've honestly never had a chestnut. I've seen them, I've heard about them via the song, but uh, they're pretty good, yeah. In Rosio Square, the city's main meetup spot, the number of tourists won't overwhelm you, but the pigeon population might. Whoa! If you're coming here, be prepared. Peanuts or old breadcrumbs are a must. Thankfully, some fellow tourists helped us out. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. It's <laughs> my new friend. <laughs> and his brother. There's actually nothing too foul about this foul. They're very friendly, eager for their next meal, and they make the perfect companions for a picture in one of the most iconic spots in Lisbon. Just, you stick your arm out, you got some food, and, uh, and they will come. Speaking of food, it was time for us to eat, and seafood is a must considering Lisbon's proximity to the Atlantic Ocean. Traditional Portuguese because you have your shrimp, mussels, and of course onion rings. Uh, <laughs> I think that's calamari. Oh. <laughs> After lunch, an afternoon stroll through the heart of Lisbon leads us to a site you might just as likely see in San Francisco. <laughs> A street performer who sounds remarkably like Kenny G, playing his sax right outside of Burger King. So I have a confession to make, a, a guilty pleasure, and I mean this with every fiber of my body. I love smooth jazz. So luckily we found the Kenny G of Portugal. With a soundtrack like that, things were really looking up in Lisbon. And once again, so were we when we spotted this weird thing and just had to go to the top. So what the hell is this? I'm not quite sure actually, it looks like the world's biggest elevator. <laughs> After buying our tickets, we were on our way to the rooftop of Portugal, seven stories atop one of the steepest hills in the city, awaiting us a stunning view of the city for those brave enough to white knuckle it up the spiral staircase leading to the rooftop observation deck. I don't do well with heights when you're walking those spiral staircases up. Have you always had to deal with heights? Yes, but I, it's not when I fly. 
It's just on things like this when it's open and I can see out. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, I'm okay. Calm down. Now that you're yeah. up here, how does it feel? It feels cool. I love the view. Look at the castle over there. That castle, those red roofs, the beautiful river off in the distance, you can see it all from the top of Elevator de Santa Justa. For about five euros, you can take it all in from this viewing platform. It was a must-see location for these two tourists from Ireland who loved the city down below. We wanted to ask you, like, what, what stood out most to you so far? I think um, it's just a really nice city to walk around. Um, I don't know, I think just walk around by foot is the best way to kind of see the city. Yeah, I really like the slipway at the end there. Have you guys ever been here before? Or? I was here once during the summer two years ago. It would be hard to top an attraction like that, but we set to try in a different part of town. Apparently everyone was told us that Bellum is the place that we have to go to, so we are going to uh, see if we can get there by car, trolley, I don't know, something pretty easy, but uh, we'll see. Everyone says the best, so we'll, we'll go. We hop on mass transit for a three-year ride to the Bellum District, formerly home to Lisbon shipyards and docks. This is the spot where 16th century explorers set out for East Africa, Brazil, and India, trade routes that made this country rich. It's here you'll find the Monument of the Discoveries, a massive stone marker paying tribute to Portugal's seafaring history, adorning its sides statues of the country's great explorers and those who helped bring about the so-called Age of Discovery. Thing is, it is still the Age of Discovery when you visit Lisbon. At every turn, a unique, interesting attraction in a country surprisingly few people visit. About six million tourists come here every year. Now compare that to 40 million who visit England, the 90 million who visit France, and the more than 20 million who visit San Francisco, the city Lisbon most closely resembles. So I think the bottom line is you can't go wrong in this city. It's, it's beautiful. And just like San Francisco, it's unusual. Where else can you see accordion-playing street musicians with dogs holding a coin purse? or street tiles, or Kenny G wannabes playing their hearts out outside of a Burger King. Or maybe you could see all that in San Francisco, but admit it, it just wouldn't be the same. The, the biggest thing takeaway from this whole trip has been just how nice people are. I think when you're at the mercy of a place you don't know the language of the people, it really shows through how nice people in this world are.